what's going on guys, Arix here, welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And in this one, I want to put together the comprehensive list of all the event quests you should be doing during the current event. I do this every single time there is a new one because the list gets exponentially bigger, but we are at a uh, kind of a monumentous moment because this is, technically speaking, the end of Iceborne. So this is probably going to be the biggest the list ever gets. I mean, there might be a few more quests that drop here and there, but in terms of events, this is basically going to be your uh, comprehensive list to all the event quests that will typically lead to either weapons, armor, or layered items. So if there's anything you've missed from previous events, then uh, sit back, check out the list, and this should cover everything so you can use it as a little checklist and work out if there's anything that you are missing. So if you do enjoy this, like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you guys are focusing on during this event. And uh, let's not waste any time, let's get started. First up, the quest USJ Shine On Forever, of course, is one of the two USJ quests. This one will allow you to craft the Azure Star-Lord layered armor, which I've been wearing a lot myself, and also craft the Azure Era Palico gear and the bow. Meanwhile, the follow-up quest, Azure Ballet of Frost, is the one you'll need to do if you want to craft the Azure Age armor, the brand new one, and also upgrade the bow. Plus, there's a little pendant in there if you want that as well. The quest Pearl Snatchers is the one you need to do if you want to get the Pearl Spring headgear. Trophy Fishing is the question you need to do if you want to get the awesome, incredibly cool, probably one of the best greatswords, I mean, not actually, but it's a giant spear tuner as a greatsword. I mean, that is Monster Hunter through and through, so if you haven't got this one, you definitely need it in your collection, even if you just want to put it on decoration in display in your house. The quest Duffel Duty will give you the parts you need to craft the Duffel Penguin Mask headgear. Meanwhile, the quest Flora Frostbite will give you the parts you need to craft the Wyvarian Ears headgear. Skyward Snippers is the quest you need to do if you want to get the Downy Crake layered armor. This was the point in the kind of quest change where they started to switch them over to layered because they realized that nobody actually wanted to wear them as armor pieces. So uh, yeah, we're kind of looking more so towards the layered things now. If you do the quest A Fish to Wet Your Appetite, this will allow you to craft the incredibly awesome Wet Fish Sabers Dual Blades, which are of course just two fish being wielded. I mean, what is not to like there? It's an awesome weapon. Following on from there, you of course have the quest called Fetching Light Pearls. This is what you need to do if you want to get the faux Kelby layered armor. You then have the quest Every Hunter's Dream 2, which is the one you need to do if you want to get the Wiggler Palico gear and weapon. That was of course one of the uh, community kind of art competition winners. And following on from there, you of course have Every Hunter's Dream 3, which is the one you need for the uh, Hunter weapon, which is the Black Eagle Charge Blade. Plus, this also gives you the upgrade materials for other items like the uh, Rocket Power Greatsword of Old and some of the collaboration items you like too. Dante weapon, Witcher weapon, that kind of thing. The quest Camo Flawed is what you need to do if you want to get the faux Abtanoth layered armor. Meanwhile, the quest Kadachi Twins, one of the new ones that was added in this event, is the one you need to do if you want to get the Kadachi layered scarf as a, a thing to wear. I mean, it looks kind of cool. You have 50 Shades of White, which is uh, one of the best quests to do if you want to get incredibly cool looking weapons, which is the Guild Palace weapons, one for every single one of the 14 weapons. And even if you don't want to use them, I mean, they're not too bad, not necessarily the best, but even if you don't want to use them, do this to get the material so you can then use it as a layered piece because I use this as my layered weapon. I love the uh, Guild Palace designs. You then have the quest Seeing is Believing if you want to craft the other incredibly awesome dual blades, which is the uh, frothy beer mugs. So if you want to run around with uh, four mugs in your hands, then uh, this is for you. Meanwhile, the quest Scores of Oars is the one you need to do if you want to get the pickaxe longsword. Beef is Never a Mistake is, of course, the quest for the meat hammer, which uh, is incredibly cool. Again, a very kind of staple design for Monster Hunter. So uh, if you haven't got this in your collection and you like hammers, what are you doing? You then have the quest RE Return of the Bioweapon, which is the Resident Evil theme stuff, and that's what you do to craft the Leon and Claire armor sets. Meanwhile, the quest A Chilling Entrance is the one you need to do if you want to get the Sealed Dragon Ninja Scarf helmet, which is incredibly cool. I mean, who doesn't want a Ninja Scarf flailing behind them? That is something you need to have added to your collection. Of course, the quest The Assassin is the one that you need to do if you haven't got around to upgrading your uh, Assassin's Creed mantle. And as a reminder, if you haven't done this one yet, then you need to jump back to the low and high rank event quests and do SDF, Silent, Deadly and Fierce to unlock the mantle. And following that, you can then go and do the uh, aforementioned quest to upgrade it. You then have the quest Muscle Monkey Madness, one of my favorite ones because this leads to the buff body armor set, which uh, is incredibly cool. However, to top that off, there is of course the brand new quest introduced in the most recent 
Festival, which is the mighty Muscle Monkey Madness, which will give you the ability to craft the layered version, not quite the same, it's the layered version of the Gamma Set, which is basically an even buffer buff body. So uh, if you want to run around with it layered, then uh, you definitely want to do this quest. It will have you hunting two Furious Rajangs, so uh, good luck with that, but either way. You then have the quest A Shocking Climax, which will of course give you the parts you need to craft the uh, awesome looking Rocket Hammer. Meanwhile, the quest The Distant Dark Tide is the one against Arc Tempered Namiel, and that will allow you to craft the uh, Gamma Namiel armor set, as well as the uh, RTN laid armor and a few other layered ones too, things like the uh, Defender set, that kind of stuff. The Last White Knight is of course the quest against the uh, Tempered Frostfang Barioth, which will of course allow you to craft the Frostfang Barioth armor and weapons. The quest Don't Forget the Earplugs against Yangaruga will of course give you the parts you need to craft the Hairband Layered Armor. Monkey Business is the quest you need to do if you want to get the Gold Spring Macaque Layered Armor. Meanwhile the quest The Naked Truth is the one you need to do if you want to get your inner either Alpha or Beta Layered Armor set. So if you basically just want to walk around in the uh, stuff you start the game in when you have no armor on, that is uh, the quest for you. One of the other recent additions, of course, is the quest The Place Where Winter Sleeps against the Arc Tempered Velcana. One of the most recent ones, of course, if you need to do that, you need to get the uh, Velcana Gamma Armor set, which is actually a uh, pretty good set if you want to sort of use a few of the individual pieces, so uh, definitely don't sleep on that. And then finally, the quest Tears from Nirvana against a uh, Tempered Black Veil of Al-Hazak will give you the parts you need to craft the Skull Scarf Layered Armor. For the most part, that is pretty much all the quests, at least if you guys are playing on... PC and Xbox. The last three are of course the exclusive PS3 Horizon Zero Dawn ones, which is Into the Frozen Wilds, which gives you the parts you need to craft the Storm Slinger prototype light bowgun, and of course the Call cool Focus Pendant. You then have the quest The Survivor, which allows you to upgrade the Shield Weaver armor, and of course the uh, light bowgun, and also make the Frost Claw Palico armor and weapon. And you have the quest Firebreak if you want to craft the Bonuk armor and the Warbow upgrade, as well as the Watcher Palico armor and weapon. And that, my friends, is your comprehensive list to all the event quests you should at least be focusing on right now. Outside of that, of course, you can still do things like Call to Roth if you want to get any of those missing weapons. You can also do the recent Zenoga quest if you want to get some fuel for your Steamworks. The quests like Ode to Destruction against Ruin and Ogigante and a few of the other ones like that, you can of course do for uh, various materials. But if you are looking to complete your collection in terms of armor, weapons and layered stuff, then that is your list. So, hopefully you found that helpful. Again, be sure to keep it locked for plenty more Monster Hunter stuff. But for the time being, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.